Good morning, uh, ladies, gentlemen, and distinguished and brother and sister from the South Asian country. I am very honored to be invited by IDSA because uh, for Myanmar citizen, this is a very uh, great opportunity because Myanmar has opened up to the outside world very recently. Then Myanmar has to uh, work harder. Uh, but uh, the good news is that uh, Myanmar will become a new Asian frontier. This is not my assessment. The, the world prestigious organization like the ADB, the Rockefeller Foundation in the United States, uh, they have predicted because of the Myanmar opening up to the outside war and the, the geopolitical significance, Myanmar will become the, uh, the new Asian uh, frontier, economic frontier. Also, I believe because uh, we have a good neighbor, the India, the, the India uh, Myanmar share many things. Uh, we have uh, many commonalities, and I am very optimistic that Myanmar will play a very significant role in uh, the region. The, the fitting example is that now Myanmar is chairing the ASEAN Chairmanship. Uh, uh, 2013, Myanmar can host uh, the the 27 the Asian Games successfully. Uh, 2014, uh, now Myanmar is chairing the ASEAN Chairmanship, and 2015, Myanmar has to integrate into the ASEAN Economic Community, and uh, we believe uh, with uh, South uh, uh, Asia country, yeah, brother and sister uh, and journalists and then Myanmar will achieve uh, it go. And my, my personal the belief is that if Myanmar can play com complementary role with uh, neighboring country like India and China, and then we can make progress in uh, very, uh, very near future. Uh, let me int uh, explain by my uh, journalistic experience. I used to be a journalist with Myanmar Time in 2003, and also thanks to the then Indian ambassador, Mr. Bhatia, I had a chance to interview the, the visiting ID, the minister, Mr. Aaron Chaudhry, and also I used to be a, the journalistic trainer with uh, American, Cent uh, American Center in Mandalay, and they have trained uh, many Burmese journalists. As uh, my brother Umiolun Do, we need to improve uh, a lot because Myanmar has been isolated for more than 40 or 50 years and still now we are suffering the legacy of the isolation. But uh, Myanmar has a very uh, glorious past, uh, especially in the 11th century, the, the, the first united uh, Myanmar was founded by King Anoyata and even today, the began in the central Myanmar attract a lot of uh, the international tourists. Also, the, in 11th century, uh, Myanmar used to be a very uh, glorious nation in the South Asia. Uh, we have very strong ties with the India. Uh, also, Indian government has been helping Myanmar in various uh, fee. Uh, this is a fitting example. In Bagan region, uh, we have more than uh, 5,000, the stupart, and the Indian Archaeological Department of Savi helped Myanmar uh, counterpart to restore this very beautiful Ananda temple. Also, reform uh, started uh, in uh, uh, 2008, uh, uh, the 2010 uh, general election. Now. The president, the former military general, and the Aung San Suu Kyi are working together for the democratization. Uh, in theory, uh, Myanmar is poised to become a, a very uh, successful nation in the South Asia, but uh, we have a lot of challenges. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, thanks to the, the good neighboring country, now we are uh, the, the uh, transforming all the challenges to the opportunity. 
let me explain to you uh, the geopolitical significance of the Myanmar. Myanmar is situated between the great uh, India and China. The, the Myanmar share with uh, Myanmar share border with uh, Laos, uh, Thailand, and China, and the India and Bangladesh. This uh, picture show how uh, Myanmar is uh, important uh, for various organizations like ASEAN and the Benstead, GMS, and uh, recently we have a very uh, uh, encouraging uh, development. Uh, on 24th October 2014, the China and India took an uh, initiative to set up an uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. The Myanmar is one of the founding members. Also, uh, uh, w I'm also working for the ADB as a national consultant, and then my the counterpart, Canadian counterpart, Miss Market, also told me that this kinds of institution will help your region in a uh, great way because uh, you are uh, expert in uh, many fee. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the ADB is influenced by Japanese, the World Bank is uh, influenced by American. Now we have our own uh, bank, and then we can make um, the the very practical uh, decision and solution for our social problem in the, our region. But uh, my Canadian expert told me that uh, if uh, Asian country can fight corruption and bribery and nepotism, and then that institution institution will be more successful. This uh, uh, picture show how uh, Myanmar uh, is important for the region. Also, uh, 2015, uh, we will have uh, the a lot of uh, interaction with uh, the ASEAN country and neighboring country. Uh, hopefully, in 2000, after 2016, the we will not have uh, the Myanmar BNN. We have only ASEAN. The the uh, our passport, uh, ASEAN citizen. Yeah. Also, this uh, is very important uh, for the Myanmar uh, to interact with the neighboring country. This uh, picture show how uh, Myanmar is important as in terms of geopolitical significance. The Myanmar is very rich in natural resources. Uh, also, uh, Myanmar is nine world largest uh, the gas resource. Also, uh, thanks to the, the the reform process, many unprecedented changes are taking place in Myanmar. Now, even today, in Nibiru, the parliament is uh, uh, holding uh, several meetings to make constitutional uh, amendment. If they can make constitutional amendment, in 2015, maybe Aung San Suu Kyi will become uh, the president. Uh, most people are very uh, hopeful that she will uh, become the president. Also, when I read uh, the academy paper in Thailand, when the British uh, journalist asked me, uh, do you believe if Aung San Suu Kyi became the president of your country, that all the problems will be solved? I don't think so, but a strong, uh, a good leadership can make a difference. Also, I believe uh, I'm not an NID party member, but uh, I'm very hopeful for the, the leadership of the Aung San Suu Kyi and the NID because she uh, is the daughter of our nation uh, founding father. Uh, Myanmar is uh, famous for many uh, natural resources. CNN uh, commercial say, the tea from Myanmar, the marvel from Italy, and sick from China, uh, Myanmar has a lot of forests even today. Uh, uh, also, Myanmar is famous for jade and ruby, and also a lot of uh, the foreign investment are flowing into the country, especially from China and Japan, and also India. Also, this uh, uh, match show, uh, Myanmar will have a lot of uh, international uh, development projects. Also, this is very important. Uh, this uh, the C 
Also, uh, there there are many uh, argument and the debate in our country why Myanmar government allow China to have the natural and oil gas line and from the city to the the Kumin, the uh, Yunnan province. But uh, uh, some people say that uh, this is uh, also Myanmar can uh, earn a lot of money from the China because of the oil pipeline. Uh, but uh, also, this is a uh, very, uh, very important. Um, the na national se security, uh, the debates are there, because uh, 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 sorry to say that uh, China influenced Myanmar for more than forty or fifty years. Because that time, the Myanmar military uh, people, uh, they were very uh, stubborn. They don't want to walk with the. Especially in 1990, Myanmar has a general election. The Aung San Suu Kyi Party (NLD) won the landslide election, but the the government never the honor the result of the election. Therefore, the Myanmar uh, used to be the I, uh, China influence for many years. Uh, but now, thanks to the media, and uh, now Myanmar know Myanmar have to work together with the uh, international community. Also, Myanmar have to. Uh, interact with the the very important neighbor, uh, India. And Two minutes, please. Ah, thank you, sir. Uh, sorry. Also, this this project is successful. That will have the great impact on Singapore. Also, I have one friend from National University of uh, Singapore, Dr. Elaine Ho. She told me. Uh, uh, if Myanmar can implement this uh, project, the, that will impact uh, Singapore, and also this is the great potential for Myanmar economic development. The Myanmar government uh, the is now uh, uh, taking a lot of step to encourage the media freedom and development. Uh, just my br brother Umulin said, but we need to develop a lot because uh, the the Myanmar journalists uh, uh, need uh, the proper training and also assistance from uh, the neighboring country. Uh, also, I believe uh, the the journalism in Myanmar will play a very important role. Also, the international uh, organization uh, are helping Myanmar uh, journalists to become uh, highly professional. And, and uh, th sorry for the time limit, uh, but I believe uh, before I came here, I read a very good uh, article that wrote by the, the famous uh, Indian-American Deepka Chopra. He said, media means everything. Uh, media, the, there are many reasons for uh, media. Some people use media for power, the politics, and propaganda, and the public service, and it, it's all the band. The, but uh, media is a very powerful tool, and the media can contribute to uh, the, the human society by uh, highlighting the conscious evolution a non sectarian society, a non military culture, global sharing, healing the environment, sustainable economy, self determination, social justice, economic empowerment of the people, the loving kindness, compassion in action, going beyond religious fundamentalism, going beyond nationalism, and extreme nationalism and extreme uh, culture. Also, media is very important in sh shaping foreign policy discourse in Myanmar. Thank you. Yeah. On that note, I'll request Mr. Dawa Penjor from Bhutan to make his presentation. He's been very kindly sharing his watch to help me keep the time. As I said, while he gets prepared, you're going to speak from there? Yeah, yeah, uh, a brief word about him, as I said, he's our only Texan in this audience. Please correct me if there's anybody else who has a Texas affiliation. But he's a graduate of the IIMC and has rich experience. 
And those of you who have been tracking Bhutan over the last few years, I think if there is one country in the region where you can make this link between the media and what it has done as far as the domestic framework is concerned, I think Bhutan would definitely stand out. But I'll request Dawa you to help us understand this. Yep. Please. Uh, thank you, Ting, for my presentation. Uh, good morning. Uh, my extended family is from the South Asia, and I don't know it's by default or by strategic that even Myanmar was included in South Asia conference. So welcome, Myanmar. <coughs> Yeah, uh, basically I'll be talking about the media, how the media can actually promote uh, uh, amalgating uh, South Asia, at the same time promote happy South Asia society. So let's, it's a breather because we have seen what media, how media can actually uh, be negative uh, and then actually in a way uh, not contribute to peace and harmony. But uh, I'm talking from a different lens as a, as a, not as a practicing journalist, but more from a policy making, more as a management view, and also seeing the media, the growth of media in Bhutan as well as in the South Asia. Uh, media is changing very fast uh, everywhere, and the fact is, uh, it's seen on worldwide that uh, it's doing more harm than actually it, it is in reality, because as some of our friends yesterday pointed out, that media has a has a power to poison society, and it's instant, and to undo that, it takes a long. Uh, effort, uh, and then I actually talk about the GNH uh, as a uh, breather to what's happening around South Asia. So Bhutan uh, features very seldom in uh, South uh, Asia uh, news streams. At the same time, even the South Asia's news uh, news in Bhutan is very very sporadic. Uh, most of uh, us would agree that uh, our news are more local than actually regional. <clears throat> even the uh, news uh, that is featured about Bhutan are even based or based on GNH or something else. And uh, we have uh, discovered from a little research that I've done that uh, most of the time, uh, most of our news that comes about Bhutan are biased or opinionated. So that's the thing that's happening around. And <clears throat> but as far as Bhutan is concerned uh, and the Bhutanese media is concerned. Uh, Thus, whenever we make reports or stories about the South Asia friends, we are very sensitive. And as uh, as my friend Lamzang pointed out yesterday, we are as cordial as possible, and then we try to build peace and harmony. And that's the reason why whenever a lot of my friends from South Asia visit Bhutan, you are more than welcomed. You would always feel welcomed. That's the whole reason, because we have already developed the perception of our South Asian friends in in better light. And that is the whole reason. However, uh, as we all know that uh, the media's influence on foreign policy, both as well as domestic policy, is more indirect than direct. But no matter what, uh, it uh, helps uh, public opinion. And then at the same time, then we actually look at things from a different angle. So with that, I would like to bring out a few examples of uh, what has happened in the past and what's uh, will keep on happening and how actually there are remedies for it. So, for instance, Bhutan in the Nepalese media is mostly we have stories about the people in the camps. And because of that, uh, when I visit Bhutan, a lot of my Nepalese friend look at me or my country, um, my countrymen from an angle that we have actually, you know, driven out the people from the south. That is the view that they have, and we don't blame them. That uh, it has happened in the past. It's uh, the fact was it was media because irresponsible because it had uh, sowed a seed of discontent, discord. Sorry, and uh, reinforced prejudice uh, and it muddled facts and you know peddled half truths, and uh, that is because we didn't have balanced report both from the Nepalese media as well as on certain part from the Bhutanese media also. We haven't actually informed much to the international media so that is but the thing is we have to look beyond that we have so much uh, historical relations with nepal we have culturally very some similarities we have tourism a pilgrimage site uh, nepal is a big pilgrimage for uh, the uh, the bhutanese who are buddhists or even hindus so that's why i think those are the things that we have to build on let's not make uh, uh, the 
uh, people in the camp, the Kargil for Bhutan and Nepal. Uh, and the fact is illegal immigration is an issue all over South Asia. It's not just confined to Bhutan. So there are a lot of things that the media can do actually to uh, take the discourse further and actually see uh, solutions to it rather than peddling half-truths and build on the negativities. The other thing I would like to talk about is the uh, recent uh, uh, in 2013, during the general election, we had an influx of, I don't know, all of a sudden, our Indian media friends were really uh, uh, gango on Bhutan's uh, stories. We had uh, stories from the Chinese incursion into the Bhutanese border and then removal of uh, kerosene and LPG subsidy, which, is a huge, which made a huge cry, who and cry in Bhutan especially for p the common people, which are going to be directly affected a lot. And at the same time, then we had th the whole uh, issue about our ex-Prime Minister having a sideline talk with the Chinese uh, Premier, and then actually, uh, which was not well taken by Delhi, it suppose. So those were the things, but we do not know whether it was uh, ill-timed or whether it was intentional. But at the same time, this gave a lot of the Putin, especially the intelligentsia diaspora to look at foreign relations from a very different perspective. A lot of people were on blogging, a lot of uh, reports were on the media talking about how, you know, Bhutan needs to rethink its uh, uh, Indo-Bhutan dependency relation and in the geopolitical context of India, Bhutan and China and then the need to balance the nature of Bhutan's relation with Indi India vis-a-vis -vis China. And at the same time, because Bhutan is very much interested to resolve the boundary issues, Bhutan is the only country besides India which has not resolved boundaries with China. So we would like to do that very urgently. It's in our better interest that we do that. <clears throat> so at the same time, a lot of uh, people in Thimpu and elsewhere in Bhutan had the thought that India media as well as the politicians shouldn't interfere in the Bhutanese uh, uh, conduct of its foreign policy and its relation and its internal affairs. So as far as possible, or for the matter, uh, India and our uh, Indian media should refrain from, especially when it's sensitive issues like the elections and where it makes a huge difference to add, at least refrain from uh, doing damage. And at the same time, uh, a lot of Bhutanese felt that it was not uh, keeping up to what, uh, uh, with the Treaty of 1949, which was revised in 2007, where actually you guarantee, uh, we have revised saying that henceforth India won't be advising Bhutan on the foreign policy relations or one medal in it. And uh, even uh, uh, the new prime minister has pointed out clearly that good relations with India are the cornerstone of our foreign policy. So that's the fact, and it will remain forever. <coughs> and uh, also the other uh, uh, reports is on the security threats that we have in the south with the infiltrations of uh, separatists uh, from the northeast uh, groups. So. Th those have issues and highlighted which actually worries Bhutan at the same time India. So on this uh, front, I think uh, India and the India and Bhutan media has to do a lot more and develop a win-win framework and actually see mutually beneficial schemes in order to undo such uh, ill reportings. And uh, one of the other thing that affects life. Uh, in the plains, Assam and West Bengal and uh, Bangladesh is the uh, floods. And numerous times Bhutan has been made responsible for releasing our waters from the dam without informing, which is very untrue. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think those kind of things uh, develops enormity towards people. And when you start developing enormity over around the borders, that's where things bungle up. We have problems one after another. So it is very important that we have, we give the truth. The media come out there and do proper research and present the truth and balanced reporting. <clears throat> uh, with this fact, uh, we have already seen a lot of uh, problems the media can uh, get into. Uh, a lot of. Uh, 
the challenges and issues with the media right now presently. So with this, I offer uh, the concept of gross national happiness as a discussion, as a theory that all of us can work on to. Bhutan, uh, the GNH, as explained by Lamzang during the question answer session as well, is a philosophy, a concept that drives the development of Bhutan. It was uh, propounded or the brainchild of the fourth king of Bhutan, His Majesty Jigme Singye Wongchuk. Basically, it was a pun on GD, GNP. He basically said, when he was asked a question by an Indian journalist when he was returning from the non-aligned movement meeting in Mumbai in 79, he was asked, uh, what we, but we know very little about Bhutan, so what is your GNP? So His Majesty said, uh, for me, GNP is not important. It's G GNH, the Gross National Happiness concept, important. So that's where I think. So I put this uh, forward to the people, uh, to our friends here, to look at it from your perspective. Because at the end of the day, it would be a lie that every one of, every individual of us is not trying to achieve happiness. If that is untrue, then you can leave this theory behind or even the concept behind. But the fact is, this is where we can look. Basically, we are not talking about, uh, you know, presenting happy story or pleasant stories in the media all the time. But we are saying that uh, this is offered to the media and the journalists as a higher goal that makes them achieve their true purpose of existence. It is not a proposal for the media, as I said, to carry happy stories all the time, but rather the necessity of making the media more conscious and reflective of the principles and values in their everyday work. I think that's where we are missing. A lot of us are missing, and then we are going after profit. For instance, today we look at South Asia. A lot of our media is only profit-driven. It's at the end of the day how much revenue you can generate so that you can pay your staff, things like that. But we are not talking about extreme. We are talking about balance here. GNH, we are not talking about a demeaning material pursuit, which is saying, let's make a balance here. Let's look at things from a balanced point of view. Let's tread the middle path. So uh, the questions I'm going to leave you with is, can we develop a media model embedded in the GNH values and principles? Can the South Asian media be a new breath of fresh air at a time when the global media is contributing to unhappiness characterized by consumerism commercialism, sensationalism, corruption, and lack of professionalism. S and uh, can South Asia media learn to treat the audiences as people and not consumers? So how do we go about building a South Asia where our people and state can pursue GNH? Thank you. Thank you.